Let's take our Bibles and turn to the 11th chapter of John's Gospel. We have a long reading today, 44 verses. So just sit back and relax and, and listen to the Gospel of John. John chapter 11. Now a man, Lazarus, was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent, sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to the disciples, Let's go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews were trying to stone you, and yet you're going back? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daylight will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, and, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us go also that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews, who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
When Jesus saw her weeping, the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. And I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Thus ends the reading of our gospel. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, many words are about to be spoken and I'm just asking this morning that your word may be heard. Open our hearts and our minds so that we can receive the truths that you have for us this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we were sitting around the table having coffee and dessert and in the midst of all the banter and the laughter, one of my friends lowered her voice and said, did you hear about Jimmy Webb? And we looked at her like, no, he went to the movies. Well, I, like Paul Harvey, was waiting for the rest of the story. What movie did Jimmy go to see? Was it a good one? Did he pay $15 for popcorn? And another friend of mine said, oh, I, I just can't believe this. And I said, what are you talking about? You know, Jimmy went to the movies. I had this blank look on my face, I'm sure. And so she tried a different angle and she said, you know, he, he turned in his social security card. And I said, what on earth are you saying? And she said, he died. And I said, well, why didn't you say that in the first place? And she said, well, you know, it's, night, it's not nice to talk about death. So, the next time somebody says to you, do you want to go to the movies? <laughs> you better think carefully before you answer. <laughs> now listen, that's, that is not the way that we we talked where I'm from. Uh, I had wonderful friends who had a farm and I spent many, many days on that farm. Louise Burns used to uh, take me out to the chicken pen. She'd grab a chicken, then she'd kill that chicken, and then she'd clean that chicken and cook that chicken 
and it was good chicken. You know, uh, growing up in a context like that, uh, I just knew that death was part of life. And, and, and if somebody, you know, died in the neighborhood where I was from, my mother or my father would say, he died. Or when you read the obituary, it would say, she died. You know, we do die. And it is part of life. It is my future. And it's your future too. But you know what I, I've discovered? Our culture, the culture in which we live, works really hard to make sure that we don't talk about What's real anymore? I mean, we can't say that he died. We have to say he went to the movies. <laughs> you know, when we write obituaries today, we try very hard to avoid the word death. We work around that word and say, well, she passed away, right? Uh, our, our, uh, I've heard uh, she, she passed peacefully in, into the arms of her Savior. Or he went home to be with the Lord. I've, I've made note through the years of, of many things that I've read in obituaries. And by the way, you do know that I wake up every morning, read through the obituaries, and if I don't see my name there, I put on my pants. <laughs> yeah, there are, are many ways that we express this. Uh, for instance, he crossed the River Jordan. Now, you've got to know your Bible to, to use that expression, right? Or, or she joined the heavenly choir. Now, have you ever heard this one? This, this really appeared in an obituary. He will be smelling flowers from underneath. Or how about this one? She put on her jeweled cowgirl boots and joined the last roundup in the sky. <laughs> or one of my favorites, this man died, I, I won't call his name, I will just say Bert. Bert will not be counted in the next census. Now, look, you, you really want to make note of these uh, for future reference. We don't seem to be ready to deal with death anymore. And I understand that. I mean, when we lose a loved one, there, there are a whole lot of emotions going on. And I think families really, without even realizing it, work hard to avoid naming what is real. And maybe, maybe on some level, it's because that we, the living, don't want to deal with the fact that the same thing is going to happen to us. So we smile and say, he went to the movies. Now, in the text that we read, that long text, those 44 verses we read, nobody there is pretending. Lazarus, it says, is dead. You know, and if Charles Dickens had written the gospel, he would have said, Lazarus was dead as a doornail. John says that Lazarus was dead for four days. 
He's most sincerely dead. Now, some of you may have caught that. Remember the Wizard of Oz? He's most sincerely dead. Nobody is pretending. Mary and Martha don't say that Lazarus went to the movies in Jerusalem. They knew that death was part of life and they're weeping. I mean, that's what happens when somebody that you love dies. They're mourning. They are grieving. And that is very appropriate. They're being honest. I mean, you can't get much more honest than Mary in verse 39. I mean, in... Um, in, in, in the New International Version here, it says, Martha, sister of the dead man, said, By this time there's a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Now, if you're reading out of the King James Version, you know, that was written in 1611, it says, He stinketh. He stinketh. Death stinketh. Because it's real. And it's something every one of us will experience. Listen, there's no amount of pretending, there's no amount of wordplay that will alter that reality. And no... no uh, no amount of health care will let you avoid the final diagnosis. We are all mortal creatures. We die. It's my future. It's your future. Mary and Martha and the neighbors experience appropriate sadness and, and they're grieving when 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 death invades their daily living, Lazarus, their brother, Jesus' friend, is in the tomb. And Jesus, did you notice, did not come when the sisters called for him. Mary and Martha speak from their hearts when they say, Lord, if you had only been here, he would not have died. Jesus weeps, and the neighbors grumble. Did you notice what they said? Look in verse um, 39. Our, our, no, let's keep going. Uh, back up to 37. Here we go, here we go. The neighbors, some of them said... Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Now, do you remember the blind man? Anybody? You remember last week? We talked about the man who was born blind. Now, this may be a stretch, but do you remember who we talked about two weeks ago? Anybody remember? The woman at the well. Yeah. The woman at the well. You know, Jesus helped her to find hope and healing. Even with her messy past. So, so, so think about this. We've, we've been reading about the woman at the well the man who was born blind, and now Lazarus today. We're reading these texts throughout the Lenten season because these events tell us some extremely important truths that we need to know. First of all, Jesus will forgive the sins of our past. Jesus will heal the wounds of our present and give us faith, like he did with the blind man. 
And Jesus will raise us from the dead, just like he did Lazarus. Oh, our culture tells us to keep pretending. But you know what? We Christians deal with what is real. And these three gospel passages tell us some truths that we need to know. Perhaps you need to hear one of these this morning. Jesus has forgiven us of our past. He can heal our present. And he will be with us in the future, even when our future takes us to the tomb. So, so how does Jesus tell us these truths? Well, first of all, his love is more powerful than anything that has happened in our past. Did you hear that? His love is more powerful than anything that has happened in our past. That woman at the well, she was burdened by the complexity of her past. She had five husbands and uh, she was keeping company with a sixth man with whom she wasn't married and she was outcast by society uh, that, that judged her very harshly. Could her past be forgiven? In effect, Jesus says, trust me. Trust me. God's love has already overcome your past. God's love has already forgiven you. God's love can heal you of whatever still is hurting in your life. Your past is in my loving arms. Now, is that a word that you need to hear today? Are you burdened? Are you troubled with a messy past? Have you made some mistakes? Have you offended People and God, do you need a fresh start? Listen, God's love can overcome your past. God's goodness is bigger than our badness, and His power to forgive is greater than our power to sin. Amen? So, God's love is already overcoming your past. Believe that. Be reassured of that. And then second, the man born blind. The truth here is that God's love is more powerful than anything that is hurting us in the present. Now this man was encased in darkness. And everybody agreed there wasn't any hope for him. But Jesus says, in effect, trust me. God's love is already overcoming your present pain. God's love is already healing what you think is hopeless. God's light is already shining in your darkness and your present is in my loving hands. Oh, does anybody here need to hear that today? Do you need to hear that Jesus is shining his light in your darkness? And that your presence he's holding in his loving hands? Then we come to the story of Lazarus. Jesus says, in effect, trust me. God's love is already in your future. God's love is working out his purpose. God's love will walk with you every step of your journey. Like Lazarus, you're going to die. But there's certainly a tomb in your future. But Jesus says, trust me. I'm already in your tomb. 
because I've already been in my tomb and I'm there in your tomb so that you will know this crucial truth. Your future is in my loving hands. And your future doesn't end with death and burial. The love of God is already in your future. Your future is full of hope. We are hopeful people. Jesus who said with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And he did. Is going to one of these days call you by name and say, come out and you will. Oh my. Did you notice that Jesus told them after uh, Lazarus had been raised from the dead, you know, he was still bound in those grave clothes and Jesus says, loose him and let him go. You know, I know a lot of people who have life but no liberty, no freedom. Do you need to know freedom today? Does Jesus need to set you free? He can and he will if you let him. Ah, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus stinketh. And now he lives. Who else other than Jesus can do the same for you or make the same promise? Death is real, but so is resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe him? Do you believe him? If so, then you can know the power of his love to unburden your past and to heal your present and to lead you with hope into the future. You can find life and love by listening to his voice. Or you can avoid the truth by going to the movies. Amen. <laughs> Did you hear about that fellow who um, was very frugal and he was very good to save up his money and and uh, he had, uh, you know, come up with a, a, a sizable amount of money. And he told his wife, he said, you know, honey, when I die, I want you to bury me with that $500,000. Would you make that promise to me? She said, okay, okay. Well, sure enough, he died. And she was going to be good for her word. So at the funeral, she put a little box in the casket and one of her friends said what was that what's in that box and she said well that's the money that I promised him I would bury with him and she said you mean to tell me you put all five hundred thousand dollars in that box and she said yes I did I wrote a check 